Please rise for the back. But this parable goes well with our first reading today. 
Amos wrote that the day of the Lord is darkness, not light. He says that God hates our festivals and assemblies. God will not accept our offerings and sacrifices. And God will not listen to our songs and music. Instead, we should let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. After the election, I started seeing some posts on Facebook and other places that said things like, no matter who wins, remember that God is on the throne. Or, no matter what happens, Jesus is king. Well, this is true. It is a big oversimplification. After all the hatred and fear we've seen during the election, it would be wrong just to wash our hands of it and say, none of that matters. Jesus is king. This kind of simple theology that sounds so good in a Facebook post or on a Hallmark card is an easy trap to fall into, especially for us Lutherans. If we are saved by Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone, then it's easy to stop there and not think any more about what that means for how we live our lives. It's tempting to let our faith become another part of the argument culture, believers versus non-believers, thinking that if you're a real Christian, you have to vote for a certain party or candidate. There are lots of problems with this two-sided mentality, thinking of every disagreement as a battle to be fought or a war to be won. Deborah Tannen says the argument culture shapes who we are in several ways. It makes us distort facts. I think we've all heard politicians on both sides of the aisle exaggerate how good their policies are and how terrible it will be if we do what their opponent proposes. Argument culture makes us waste valuable time. Deborah Tannen uses the example of scientist Robert Gallo, a co-discoverer of the AIDS virus. He was falsely accused of stealing the virus from another scientist and was forced to spend years fighting false accusations instead of researching a cure or a treatment. I suspect many scientists fighting the coronavirus today can sympathize. Argument culture limits our thinking. By framing everything as extreme, two-sided arguments, we are conditioned to think of everything in terms of fighting and conflict. And this leads to a void and pride both effects, where we eventually stop listening to other perspectives. Finally, the argument culture encourages us to lie. If you fight to win, the temptation is great to deny facts that support your opponent's views and say only what supports your side. It encourages people to misrepresent and in the extreme to lie. Deborah Tannen says we can overcome this by making special effort not to see in twos. On TV and radio, producers should avoid public discussion as a debate, avoiding the format of having two guests discuss an issue, including three or four, or just one. Re-examining the idea that audiences always prefer a fight. Instead of asking what is the other side, ask what are the other sides. Instead of hearing both sides, insist on hearing all sides. Avoid metaphors of sports and war, using all our creativity to move from argument culture to a dialogue culture. When I worked at the New Life Center, I worked alongside many staff and volunteers who were all across the political spectrum. And while we might have disagreed about who should be president, we all agreed that we were called by God to help the homeless. We might not have agreed on what the government's role in that should be, but we all agreed that we as individuals needed to do that work. And I think that's what today's scripture is calling us to do. Yes, God is on the throne no matter who wins the election. But acknowledging that Jesus is king is the beginning of faith, not the end. When Amos says, alas for you who desire the day of the Lord, I think he is talking about this hallmark card of faith. If all our faith does is make us gather in solemn assembly, giving offering and singing songs, then the day of the Lord really will be like we rested our hand on the wall and were bitten by a snake. Instead, our faith should lead us to let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Those ten bridesmaids in today's gospel are us. We all know that Jesus is coming. We all are ready with our lamps. We all have faith that God is on the throne. The foolish bridesmaids are us when we choose an easy faith, when we think that just having the lamp is enough, when we think that being saved by grace means we can stop working at our faith. When that is us, it doesn't take very long for our lamp to go out. But when we work at our faith, when we answer God's call through Amos to bring about justice and righteousness, when we hear the psalmist cry, I am poor and needy, come to me quickly, O God. 
and when we act to bring about God's kingdom here and now, when we stop arguing about who's right and who's wrong, who's red and who's blue, and instead start a dialogue about how to help people no matter what, when we really live like God is on the throne and we are his faithful servants, then we become like the wise bridesmaids, with enough oil for our lamps to be a light in the darkness no matter when our Lord comes. Amen. Um,